good afternoon, good afternoon, well, good evening, rather. Uh, good evening, Dr. how are you? Uh, Daphne Phillips, how are you? I am actually fantastic, a bit nervous because I've been in camera all day because the summit starts tomorrow. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Wow. So, 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 I, well, we want to, we want to, uh, uh, applaud you and congratulate you on the summit. Uh, we want to also thank you for uh, joining the Mojo Show. Um, it is definitely a pleasure and an honor. Um, I, I don't understand how you could be uh, a little nervous because as you mentioned, you've been on camera all day. So <laughs> with that being said, and, and I'm sure you've probably been with people with that have been more uh, notable or nominal than we are, uh, so you should just feel right at home. Oh, no, because I have been uh, throughout the four corners of the, the universe from South Korea um, to Iraq. And wow. To, but it was early in the morning, so I find that being in front of strangers is a lot easier for me than being in front of my own community. So that's why I'm a little bit more nervous, you know, talking here than anywhere else. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, that's interesting. That's interesting because you know sometimes I feel that the same way, but but tell us about tell us first tell us about yourself, um and tell I, us a little bit more about the uh, the the summit that's taking place. Yes, hi, my name is Daphne Philip. I'm finishing actually finished my degree. I'm just waiting for the three letters to put um, behind my name. The summit came from my years of studying uh, um, the educational theories on um, educators as a learner, instruction and innovation. I'm a complete love for technology and education. And throughout the years of studying, I've seen that it's something that a lot of educators are struggling with even today. So I've been a tutor. So I just, because of COVID, my business, tutoring business had to come on, online. If you notice right now, if you go in a parallelogram institute, you will see STEM education, mathematics, and education in the world because I'm a tech coach for teachers. But because of mm. COVID, that whole scene that I started was going to change completely after the summit because I have to change it to meet the needs of my participants. So not that much. I have one son. I live in um, Maryland. I've been teaching for 20 plus years. I'm a math teacher. I'm STEM certified. I, I've been in designing and um, for business side also certified. I have so many certifications, to be honest, it's kind of hard to list them all here. And, but it's all around education. I love education and I love educators. Beautiful, beautiful. Tell us about the summit. Well, the summit is put together to support educators that are struggling with technology. Not necessarily struggling, but I would like for them to become more efficient. So it's coming from three different perspectives, looking at educators as the learners, looking at educators as instructors, and looking at educators as innovators. Each of the day, focusing one of those perspectives. Yeah, you're going to have 20, about 30 speakers worldwide come in to offer their perspective in the areas of, like I said, for the educators looking at learners. So on day one, Many of the speakers are going to give the teachers tips and how to become a better learner and how to use it to leverage their teaching instruction and how to use it to leverage their innovation. So each day is focusing on a different aspect of an educator, but it's all mm. for teachers. Hmm. That's 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 great. Now, um, one of the things that you highlighted, uh, Dr. Philip, is um, how COVID. It, it, to some degree enabled you to stop teaching, uh, I guess, your, or, or start, stop tutoring, um, I guess, one-on-one -on -one right. to some degree. So, right. so would you say, would you say COVID actually helped you to some degree because of the nature of, of what, what it is that you teach outside of mathematics since technology is one of those things? Oh, yes. Without COVID, parallelogram, I don't think would have existed. I, it, mm. it was just, in this, it was, I was just tutoring on the side because like students struggled in the high school and middle school. So I just did it for the people that I know around my community, around my church. It was more on a voluntary basis. Whoever needed help with math, I just helped them. 
And I just like it so much. So that's why I did it. it. I did it for some money. If it's a church, it was volunteer. If it was an adult that was struggling with a college exam, I usually charge it. So it was on and off. It wasn't an official business like it is right now. But because mm-hmm. of COVID and everything had to shift and get online, it was a nightmare. I had many of my colleagues wow. who were in a position to retire. They already retired the next day. Those who couldn't retire just flat out quit. And some of them were still lingering in the risk. You know, it was so many different challenges and trauma. I heard a couple earlier talking about trauma and the, how important it is to address mental health. And I believe that is going to definitely increase tremendously in the education period from educators, from teachers to parents to everybody, because this is a serious trauma. Wow that we are still in the middle of. So Parallelogram mm-hmm. Institution was created to meet some of those needs to help educators have a mental, have a mind shift towards technology because they didn't want to do it, you know, not because they didn't want to, they didn't want to do it, but they had choices not to, but COVID mm-hmm. took away that choice. We had to be online and use technology to educate the people in front of us. On the top of that, we had to learn it. We were learning it, in teaching and you know, in meeting the students need, it was, it's a lot, it still is a lot for a lot of the educators. Right. Wow. Um, Dr. Philip, if I may ask, um, I mean, it, it is probably evident, but uh, <laughs> just so that I can ask my next question, um, uh, are you Haitian? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the reason why I asked that is because We come from a culture that focuses more on or emphasize more, I guess because of the nature of our country, that focuses more on, uh, uh, when we talk about doctor, we talk about doctor in uh, the medical field, ou bien si ça y est infirmière, ingénieur, ou on prend agronome, uh, those type of careers. How do we we speak a language of technology to a culture that only sees a sense of success in those other fields? Oh, that is a very personal story that I could address with my own family. Parce que le nouveau Haiti c'est système ça Le monde pour succès, il faut que pour docteur agronome, avocat. Si pas eu non trois bagages ça, il que soit sort étudier, il pas tellement important. So, when I went to school to study nursing, I did a three years out of five years as a physical therapist. I only needed to do my practicum. When I got to the hospital, I couldn't smell, I couldn't stand the smell of the people. I couldn't stand the smell of the hospital. I couldn't stand the blood, so I had to stop completely where I was at. So medical was not for me, and I didn't want to be a lawyer. And agriculture, agriculture was not my thing. So I finished my degree in communication and media, and I still didn't use it. But when I walked into a classroom, I was so comfortable. My mom was not very happy with me because majority of our family are doctors and lawyers. The typical, I you know, doctor, infirmier, avocat. So. Et I think even now, les learn to do this. Oh, ça c'est petit moins. So she's, so she's professeur lié. You know, like it's nothing. <laughs> wow. Know? No, I, wow. I, she says it. I don't think she recognizes what it means to put the word just. Oh, she's just a teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, before mm-hmm. and I had to have a conversation mm-hmm. with her, and she doesn't do it anymore. But being from the Haitian culture or from the Caribbean period, is it's there's a certain specific career you have to choose for your family to see mm-hmm. you as successful. Mm-hmm. Teaching, mm-hmm. definitely not one of them because of what's going on in Haiti with the teachers. They don't get paid sometimes. They're free. And some of them may not be educated. Some of them may not be certified. They're just standing in front of you teaching, but it's not like that everywhere everywhere else. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, 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 you know, I really applaud you because um, what what was somewhat of a 
a downfall became a stepping stone for you. Um, yeah. So right now, so right now, the, the, the thing is, is how do you teach? Because you have a summit coming up. How do you teach parents and kids about something that our, our culture still has not embraced? I mean, we cell phone now, c'est une technologie que you, you recevoir juste pour you capable peut-être recevoir uh, l'argent cam ou bien transfert cap fait ou on prend pour you pour c'est bon technologie ça a pas accepté li mais mais en l'autre technologie est-ce que est-ce que nous voit que uh, you know it's i guess this is a twofold question is Haiti is Haiti ready for the technology and is Haiti ready for you well, a little bit of both, because we have to do a cultural mind shift first. Parents in Haiti are still dealing with teachers, some that are not certified or not in a position, that, that are not educated to teach. So we as a nation, we have to get in a position where we certify our teachers to, be, to teach our students, to teach your child that's standing in front of you. So we have to get that mind shift mm -hmm. first. The country have to create some kind of certification program, a national certification program for teachers to go through. So that way, when a school hire the teacher, whether it be local, state or region, they know whoever's standing in front of their child is equipped to do their job. That's that mind shift. Mm -hmm. Then we also have to have parental mind shift that the technology is not only to you know, ask for minutes or ask for money or to post on social media, you know, to get the latest likes or create drama and create the division among your family. So it's not only for negative way to use technology, but it also can be a source to educate your children, to connect to the universe. So Haiti is very well known in other side of the country. I got more respect when they find out I was from Haiti than I bought my PhD. Because unbeknown to the Haitian community, Haiti is looked at as a pioneer because they were the first one to get the independence. So mm -hmm. you need to be able to bring some of that into your home. And technology is the only way that could do it because you could use Skype, you could use WhatsApp, you could use social media, Twitter, all of those things you could use to connect with people from other side of the world that's appreciating your culture as you share in theirs. So parents need to start taking their own initiative to figure out how they're gonna connect their, ch their child to some other side of the world, not just Canada, not just French, not just US. There's Africa got so many wonderful initiatives that they do with their young people that are running their own business. In Africa, Rwanda, that was worse than we are, then young people got together along with the government to fix their own country. Haiti can do the same. My hope is that Haitian will start equip their young people to solve Haiti's problems. Stop inviting strangers wow. to come in to do it. My, that's wow. really the purpose of the summit is for me to go home. I'm doing it to gather resources. I wanna go home. I wanna retire home. I wanna live home. I don't wanna take my, I'm doing it because I'm in a position to do it and I have to. But I want to educate the teachers in Haiti to use everything that we have in Haiti to fix Haiti's problems. So wow, that's um, that's 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 phenomenal. I, I think the work that you're doing is is wonderful. It's needed um, for such a time as this. Uh, you know, I have three kids. Uh, they they uh, five years apart. Betty and Shensi has a son. What are some of the tips that you can give parents um, on on? Well, before that, you give us the tips. What are some of the the issues that you find since you have tutored children? What are some of the issues that you find today's young people? Um, maybe Betty or, or Shensi. Um, or even uh, Lovely may not uh, remember, maybe Mona Lisa or, or people like my mom who uh, used to study because they didn't have lights. 
you know, in, in their home or, you know, um, sorry, what we call generator. You remember you really, um, uh, uh, um, del cum quality, you really, uh, del cu. So, um, you know, you know, now, you know, we have all types of things that, uh, lighten our home. So what are some of the struggles that you see that kids now are dealing with? Um, and what are some of the things that you can give, what tips you can give parents um, that can help them with, um, with, uh, with, uh, with their um, education? Well, we could look at it right now because in the middle of pandemic. But my answer is laugh, learn, period. As long as you have a child in front of you, I think these strategies and these tips will work. Number one, in our culture, parents are hands off in the opposite end where they don't even answer the teacher's email, they don't take the teacher's phone call until some crisis happens. That's the other end. Then the opposite to that, you have a parent that's constantly called that question everything the teacher does. I don't listen to, if the teacher explain the child behavior they don't believe it, they don't wanna hear it. So those two things are completely create chaos for your own home and it's not good for you and for your child. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was listening to the show, like I said, the couple consistently talk about communication. Communication is the key period on any type of relationship. So between you and your teacher, you need to establish you, the communication that you're gonna have with the teachers of your child. Are you gonna check in once a week, once a month, if your child does something or not, how do you want to hear it? How do you want to process that communication? So let's talk about that first. You have to be able to step back and recognize that your child is one person in the house or two children in your, your house. But your one child is now in a classroom with 30 other students from 30 different homes, from 30 different parents. Mm. Style. And that child of yours have to survive. Sometimes they have to get along to feel safe. They're going to do things that you wouldn't be, you know, you would not accept and you wouldn't be okay with, but it's difficult to be a child nowadays in education. So you have to listen to your child, granted, and understand their side, but you also have to listen and understand the teacher's perspective. Get to know your teachers. Do not have your hands up. This mm. is not a... We are here in the United States that parent engagement is expected. Pick up a phone, mm -hmm. answer your email, check on your child grade, ask them how are they doing with your grade? Are you understanding? What do you need? You're gonna have to ask these questions because a lot of my challenge with my own community is that hands are, well, you pay a professor, I say job professor, something you wear pusa. That's your child. <laughs> You supposed wow, to wow, wow. <laughs> you're supposed to check in making <laughs> sure that your child not being disrespected or being neglected. There are teachers who don't do their jobs. <laughs> there are people mm -hmm. who just show up and I'm gonna speak to that because I have some colleagues that I work with that don't do their job. They they don't care about your child, they couldn't care less if they learn, especially African American. If you're black, you're from Haiti, you phone, you have an accent, you don't learn quick, and you have the people standing in front of you that look nothing like you. And your parent want to say, oh, everything is okay. No, you got to check in. Now that you get wow. that part, take care of the instruction part, the homework part. You may not know how to do it, but there's stuff in Google, there's stuff online. Create parameters and safety. Give your children autonomy. Get them to be comfortable with using social media for learning. It's not just for gaming. It's not just for fun. That is a learn skill. They're not going to pick up the phone and see learning. They're not going to pick up the tablet and see learning. It's all game to them. But you have to create the, the environment where your, your child is going to see that same technology as a learning resources for them as well. So wow. create family That's time very around deep. homework. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask you another question um, while... Uh, Betty and Shensi and, and Lovely uh, prepare a question for you. Um, as we talk, uh, I'm listening to some of the things that you say and 
Um, I, I hear words such as innovative, and that's definitely something that I'm all about. I'm always looking at innovation, even within the sphere of mental health. Um, but I guess the question that I want to ask, do you see in the future or near future, since you were on a call with uh, different countries, uh, different cultures, um, do you see in the near future a global school where a kid here in the U.S. is sitting on a virtual classroom with a kid in Haiti or a kid in Saudi Arabia or a kid in uh, Rwanda, Africa? Do you see a global school? Is, is, is it possible, of course, with technology, because the fact of the matter, yes, I know that there's a language barrier, that's one, but two, at the same time, as a mathematic, uh, as, a, as, a math, as a mathematician, one of the things that I can say is, you know, regardless of where you are in the world, two plus two is always going to equal two, however it's written and however it's said. So um, I, I don't know if my, my question is a bit ambiguous. No, it but, isn't. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Actually, that's exactly what I'm doing. I am I'm setting up the platform for that. And that's what I'm working wow. for. Wow. And it's already been and starting from a Haitian too. <laughs> no, no, Haiti, I we do some nonprofit work with some Haitian and uh, during the summer. And that's exactly what I'm putting in place. And that's the purpose I started the summit. Wow. It's just like putting a stadium light on my desire to provide a classroom where my Haitian students and my kid and my culture, because like I said earlier, we are really respected abroad and we don't even know it because we are so busy hearing what America says about us being a shithole country. We actually see ourselves yeah. like that. And if we're not, everybody does not see Haiti like that. The little, the suffering wow. and all that stuff, we constantly look, that's not how we have seen. You know, do we, they, wow. we, they think we're poor, yeah. But that's exactly the platform that, that I'm creating. That's why I'm collecting wow. experts around the world is to create an environment in a platform where students in Haiti would interact with people in South Korea, Myanmar, Iraq, you, you, uh, where else I went? I went to UK, um, I'm in London, Canada, Ontario. I forgot all the, I'm in nine different countries. I believe the summit, you could see- My God. On there is yep. to collect those experts to stand in front of the students. I love experiential learning because that's the type of learner that I am. I want to experience learning. Wow. Don't talk at me. <laughs> Just Miss da me Dr. Daphne, let me tell you, um, we I'm glad that we have Betty and Shensi and Lovely on the line, and they're gonna they're gonna ask uh, one question. We want to make sure that we wrap it up. Um, at a reasonable time, but at the same time, I want to give it give them the platform to uh, able to ask you more uh, a question or two about what it is that you're doing. But right before they answer, I want to also make uh, myself available. My company um, there is uh, something that uh, that's very common in the educational sphere, with, which they call uh, SEL social yes, so emotional and learning. emotional learning. Yes. Trust me. I want to integrate that with over a virtual uh, platform. So please, that is something that we're actually doing uh, with a contract with the Department of Education here in New York. Um, but I would love to partner up with you. Um, and uh, when this virtual school becomes uh, 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 prepared and available and ready to launch, I would love to offer my piece. Um, and, and I'm also going to speak for uh, Lovely, who deals with young ladies and, and ADA youth, who, who deals with young kids, not only here in the U.S., but also in Haiti. Um, I'm marketing for them right now, but um, I'm just so, so flabbergasted by what it is that you're doing that uh, I, I just have to jump on that bandwagon and in any way, shape, or form I can help, I, I want to be able to uh, participate. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, feel free to ask Dr. Philippe a question uh, concerning the, the astronomical thing that she's working on right now.
One quick before you answer, um, we you want to listen to Dr. Nadia Blackman. She talks about virtual psychological processes because she works a lot with special education. So she will address mm -hmm. some of that stuff you just mentioned on already in how to deal with it, especially on virtual um, right. classroom. Yes, we nice. have a speaker that will address that already. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. You said Sandra Blackman? Dr. Nadia Blackman. She's Nadia on Blackman. day one. Okay. She should be on day one, I believe. She's in the day as teachers, as learners. Okay. Okay, go ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Dr. Okay, hi. Thank you so much for being here this evening and addressing such an important topic. Such Please speak topic. louder. I can't hear you for some reason. Okay. Is that better? Is this oh, better? yes, much better. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Uh, thank you. Very impressive work. And uh, I'm honored to share this platform with you tonight. Now, as a mom and being uh, also in our culture, we technology for someone our age that is living in America, we work with technology, we embrace technology, we understand technology. However, we also understand some of the damages that, uh, that technology also imposed on our kids, especially young kids. So uh, I heard some of the great, how are uh, you using technology in education to fuse together? You have uh, the fusion of the two for successful learning, especially with remote learning now. We have our kids in front of computers and iPads and gadgets practically almost all day. Now they do a lot of their work also on gadgets where there's a great reduction in, in penmanship, in paper, books, you know, turning the page, they even reading, they have a library online for my kids. You know, how do we, how can we actually reduce? How do we embrace that, but also stay away? How do we just uh, not encourage so much for our kids to not live, to become one with technology. How do we um, avoid sed certain sedentary lifestyles, especially with learning when it's so much apparent in our faces? I mean, how, why would you yeah. tell those parents? Two things. I'm gonna tell you the reality of it. Technology is here to stay. Whether you embrace it or not as a parent, your child is infused in them. If you notice babies come out with a laptop in their hand, penmanship, I don't even have it anymore myself, even though I started out with, because I'm typing everything all the time. Everything is on your phone. So when you mentioned penmanship, where would you see the purpose of penmanship nowadays when everything in the business sector, in church, in the community, everything's on online anyway? Well, so that's an idea to think about because I hear you and I'm also a book lover. To reduce some of the virtual is to create family night, family day, family weekend, where you cannot be on the computer either. You cannot pick up your phone either. So you take out the arts and craft, the coloring book, the Play-Doh, all of those things, and you get the young people to play with their hand, to be active, go outside. You could do a scavenger hunt outside in the park. Get to know your neighborhood, get to uh, walk to the store, get the kids to pick out the different fruits and vegetables to get so they could touch it, get their kinesthetic involved, get the eye involved. You know, there's many ways you could do that. And you could do family fun day, you could do family exercise day. There's a list of activities that you could do with that virtual, with that technology. That's that minimizing your you and yourself and your child being on the technology. But however, being on technology, again, like I said earlier, it's a learned skills. Teach your child good, bad, and ugly of social media. Do not hide it because they will learn. Teach them what's valuable. Teach them what's the right way, what's the wrong way. And I find sometimes in dealing with the children whose parents or of faith who are pastors as parents, are very clueless on some of the things that's going on and they are left to experience it in school. And I guarantee you that's not gonna be done the right way. So 
you have to open up communication. You have to find uh, the different experiences, the right one, the wrong one, and have a conversation. Pick a video and say, what's wrong with this video? How do you feel about it? Why is it right? What's wrong with it? You have to have this conversation with your children to teach critical thinking skills, to teach problem solving skills. So when somebody there in the class offer them something, they're gonna know, oh no, this is not right. Not because my parents said, but because it's not right for me as an individual based on my value system. So they have to have that. Is it always gonna be all, you know, right? No, but give them a base for them to make decision on how technology can be used to foster and to elevate their values as opposed for them to accidentally end somewhere that they have to fight their way out of. Just prepare them, you have to do both. I hope that answered your question. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Philip. Now, uh, uh, Betty Shensi. Dr. Philip, thank you for taking the time to be with us and thank you thank for the you. work that you are doing. Thank you. And I love to take part of it. I have two questions, one of a, one personal and one of a general question. So I'll start with the personal one. My son, we came, we took him out of private school. He's currently in, in public school now. And some of the topic that are being discussed, he's he, he how do I get him to be focused? Because he says, mom, I already did that. Like he's more advanced than the material that is being provided now in the classroom. During class, his camera is off. We constantly, even we're working, we constantly have to check on him, say, Caleb, you have to stay focused. Mommy, I already know this. Look, I already have the answer. Well, participate. So how do I keep him focused on that? So um, the, mm -hmm. go ahead. And so the second question is, I'm also part of the PTA because I'm, I'm, the, I'm the mom that wants to get involved, to get in the business, to find out what's happening, how can I change and how can I help? So with the P, we have a wonderful PTA um, group where we're creating activities. So as, as an educator, I, my question to you is, how do we get parents to take accountability? Will we wow. have, we have, you know, <laughs> we have. If you, I had the answer, I wouldn't be couldn't create a summit. I would have been rich. I would have been in Haiti with, I uh, don't drink alcohol, but I would have something fruit with the water hurting my feet. So Parents, young people, we are officially at the consequences of young people having kids. These are the 30 year olds where before they were having kids. And that's where we are. We had young people raising young people. So they don't believe that they should take responsibility. They, Again, they think it's their teacher's job. Mm. That's what it is. I cannot teach 30 young people values. If I have to teach them value, I'm going to teach them mind. Mm. Parents want a teacher to be a better parent to their child than they are to their own child. Mm. Let my child give them enough grace when it's necessary. Punish them, but don't do it too bad because I don't want their feelings to get hurt. It's like, I can't be that. I can't be better than you at home with 30 people in front of me. That's the challenge. Parents don't want to take accountability because it's easy for them to put it off because there's other things they want to do. They want the teacher to do it. I cannot. It's unfair to expect an educator to give value to your child. I don't know what your value system is and mine is different from you. And that's what's happening. A lot of teachers are teaching these young people their value system because they want them to. So you can't complain if you know if I'm teaching them something. You want me to do the job and I'm doing it. To answer your question, parents like you, I love, I adore because it makes my life easier. We have a relationship with those parents, the PTA that show up and the rest of the parent I'm always chasing after. And they don't answer my email. They don't answer my phone call until the child get to a point in crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, like mental health is a huge thing for foreign kids, especially foreign children when parents don't believe in mental health and counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want the spirit in their head, the probably business role. That's, that, that's big in school. But the only way I could tell you is to continue to talk to your friend since you're in the PTA, listen to their story, find out why is it difficult, what's going on at home, you know, how can you support, how can they connect with the 
school system and see it as a partnership versus a us versus them kind of relationship. It's not, you know, that's the one thing I could say to you. Thank you for being part of PTA. I appreciate parents like you that wants to get involved. So that's the one tip I could ask. Thank that's you. that yeah. part. Hold on. Leave your son alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm for the kids that are intelligent. If the child already know, what do you want them to do? What I would like for you to do is call your principal, call the counselor, and see they could put him in an advanced class. Have him tested so he could be in advanced class. Go that route. If there's other uh, something else you get involved in to engage his mind. When young people already know information, you cannot threaten them, punish them, and cite them and sit them into being engaged because they're already bored. You, you know, the goal mm -hmm. is, is to keep them curious and keep them engaged. Then you won't have to force them to get engaged. If the thing is boring, it's boring. What do you want the child to do? It's boring. <laughs> so he has to find some other way to engage the students. So I hope I answer mm. both of your questions in terms of general PTA and second in terms of your child. And some of the topic to some parents, especially your religious parents, the school system is mandated to do a lot of some topic that you may disagree with. That's why I say, check on your school. Mm. When my son had to do sex education, he was not allowed. I didn't want these people to teach my child anything about sex. I did it myself and I kept them from school. I'm not, I'm just saying my personal opinion. Yes. You know, if there's a topic that you don't want your child to uh, uh, learn from school, but you still have to teach it so they will learn the information. Don't just take the child out of the school and don't teach it. That's mm -hmm. not fair because they're going to hear it from their peer. I took my son out, but I still did the sex education at home. So when he got back to school, he was still equipped to be around the young people because he had the information. I just did it my way. That's good. Wow. Dr. Dr. Daphne, um, if it is possible, you know, we don't have to have a good time. There are so many questions, so many questions, so many information that we have to take care of, which is really, really important. Et il est nécessaire parce que on sait que les parents de Yohan, c'est juste vous et l'école et puis pour te en canner avant moi. Mais pendant ce temps, il y a battu. On comprend. Il y a une question de mon bagage qui est là, qui est là. Quelques cas et cas en plus le monde. Il est le board of education. Right. Board of education, là, son, son bâton pour y battre le monde, pour y éduquer. Uh, 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 like I know you really was. Oh. <laughs> uh, me pendant ce temps, uh, you pas on is satisfied to pass it, especially in the time we are living, the technology, yes. technology in front of everyone, and even the way you are maybe able to hide the things in the world, we are on the billboard, they are on the billboard outside, you are on the train, you are on the bus, you are on the train, a sensi uh, a fe yon reklam pou yon fwi yon pa kon ki sa fwi yon gen uh, rapport avec yon si toutou ni ou bien yon right. you, know, you know so there is so much information there's so much information that our kids are learning so much so nou nou na nou nou tan kote se ti moun nan kap apren nou teknoloji yon <laughs> exactly. so exactly. um we we are so thankful and grateful for someone like you that did not allow some of the constraints in life to stop you from achieving the things that you have achieved. Um, and we're grateful for you because you have made milestones um, in our community, in our country. And you, it is people like you, people like uh, Lovely, people like Shensi and, and Betty and Mona Lisa and, and um, Joe, who have truly shown that Haiti is not a shithole country. No, not by far. Okay. We, we are grateful. We are grateful um, that, uh, that, you have, that you have taken that initiative. So um, as we close, because we are, uh, time is up, um, but we would like for you to share with us 
how do we get get involved in this summit? How do we how do we participate? You know, what can we do to want to support? There are people that are listening via Facebook that need to know how do we follow you? How do we get in contact with you? Let us know. I mean, we're not going to bombard you. No papa. Kone ai se e me di munja ba na me kite ndomi, u ba ga ba u fe, you know, stuff like that. But we want to know how do we how do we connect? How do we 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 partner up or how do we be a part of this summit? Well, the summit is for educators only. So if you are a teacher, okay. you're welcome to participate. It's at www.innovativeworldteachersummit.com. And Mona Lisa would definitely, you know, want to check in her picture and her link to check her out because she is definitely talking about teachers using the classroom as a social change agent. And that's exactly what I want educators. That's my mission and vision for the Parallelogram Institute is for educators to use their classroom the classroom as the platform to change the world. I am on Beautiful. Twitter as Daphne Philip. I am on LinkedIn as Dr. Philip. And IG, I am Dr. Daphne Philip. And Facebook, I'm Daphne Philip. So I wanted to make it easy for everybody to find me. Just tap in my name. Don't worry, you won't be able to bombard it because you have to be approved in all this site anyway. So <laughs> I just want to prove I just want to prove you to have access to me like that. But thank you guys um, for bringing forth the mental health. Thank you for your parent and thank you for introducing spirituality into it because this is spiritual work for me. And I start with God now and with God. So that's why I'm successful is because I'm following the his lead and everything that I do. But mental health and Beautiful. our community is definitely very important. And I would ask the religious group of you, please teach your children things as opposed to hide it from them. Give them mm. your perspective. Open that door for the conversation. Let it be mm. at home. Give them an opportunity to ask you a question. It may be uncomfortable, but it'd rather be you than their friends or the accidentally free app or whatever, because it is around them. They're going to get it. Do not think, or they probably already have it. You don't even know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So please step up, communicate these things, communicate why we have value system, why do we live the way we do. So that way they have an opportunity for them to decide and to create a value system and they could live and navigate it throughout the whole thing. Wonderful. Thank you again. Uh, uh, just Thank to you add, so much for having um, me. <laughs> just to add, can parents, get their child teacher to attend the summit? Yes. If you, have a, if you have a relationship with your... Good. <laughs> not, okay, yeah, great. The educators. I have my own student. There's one that just sent me something while we're talking. They, they are volunteer in the summit, so they're monitoring it. It's about 1,000 plus people coming. As long as they click on the link, this has got to be educators because they, wow. all we're going to talk about is tip, tools, strategies, and how to make the classroom fun from um, the learning, instructing, and the innovation perspective. Wow. Wow. Thank you again so much. Um, it was my pleasure. We, thank we, you. Thank you. We applaud you. Um, I don't know if Dr. Mona Lisa is, is here. If not, we are going to sign off, and we look forward to seeing you again. I think, uh, I think there, there should be another segment with uh, <laughs> mental health and, and technology. Oh, yes, I'm definitely game. Anything with technology and education, you have my attention. Let's get it. I'm excited. Me too. Thank, Thank you, guys. You it was a great um, section earlier. The couple was wonderful. Love you. You guys, I love it. Beautiful, beautiful. Exactly. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Shanti. Thank you, lovely. Um, Thank you, Dr. Mona Lisa. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Mona Lisa. I see you. Dr. Philip, do you have any room for mentorship? I have one young lady uh, on the page that says, as a future educator, I'm inspired by you, Dr. Philip. Oh, I do have, I would just plug her in with my Korean mentees. That's not a, so if she's coming wow, in, I'm gonna plug nice. her in with my international uh, mentees. Just give me a minute. The summit is the next three days. So I wanna finish that and I'm creating the virtual group already. So okay. let me, I need to fine tune the different thing because that came up throughout the whole summit because I was interacting with different people. They asked to put future young people educators. So give me a minute. <laughs> There's so much I, coming. I would definitely um, reach, uh, contact me via 
um, Twitter. Mona Lisa. And DM me on Twitter. Twitter. Or oh, Mona Lisa, I know where to find me. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you in advance. Yes. So yes. Guys, every time I'm trying to run away, every time I'm trying to hide and mind my business, I'm always in the jail. <laughs> every time I'm trying to say, you know what, this is a, 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 it's time for me to slide over, let you guys take over, let you guys be, you know, in the forefront. I'll be in the back, you know, behind the scenes somewhere, but um, I'm, I'm getting phone calls. I'm, I'm texting, you know, but I, I still, but it's really a pleasure it's an honor for me to work with you guys. It's an honor for me to connect you guys across the states, across the world. And um, it's, it's funny how we're connecting people, you know, uh, like I said, across the world, Japan, Africa, oh, yeah. right? Yes, Africa, Africa. Yeah, we are nine different countries. I, if you see the summit page, you'll see the different countries. I don't remember them right now. Wow. And, and wow. this is what Betty and I do all summer, all year round. And, and, and we're getting ready to graduate another set of students. Um, I, I, I was on vacation this week. I, des I felt like I deserve a break, but I couldn't get a break, Daphne, because we're working on a project with HRA, yes, I serve HRA, it. IOM, we work on emergency management and disaster. We're all over the place. It's like, <laughs> I feel like a slave. But, but um, anyway. It, and it, more it, to come. More to come when we have a surprise for you later on. For resources for our community. This is what we do. Um, um, and I'm looking at Sony, it's like, every time my phone rings, I'm like, what now? What initiative does he have now? Because he's out there day and night looking for resources for the community. It's like, I'm like, are we, are we right in our minds? But we, it's somehow we, we suffer from the same disease, from the same illness. You know, whether it's elections, we're on the same platform. Shanti, you know, I, a campaign is starting in Georgia. I'm like, Chancey, what are we doing? From presidential <laughs> campaign to to senatorial, let's go. From from Florida to Georgia, let's go. It's like I'm on it, <laughs> guys. I, I really don't know how to thank you for just being my backbone, for being my support, for being so humble. And all I could say is thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being humble. Thank you for being you know, just servant of, of, of this community where you're doing work that you don't get paid for. Nobody signs a paycheck mm. over to you. You're just engaged citizens. <laughs> Lovely, you know, has three children to take care of, yet she would drop those three children, pack them up in the car like, 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 like baggages and like, guys, let's go. We got to go, you know, drop our food. And this woman's going around feeding, you know, so many families mm. in this community. And I'm like, where do you find energy, lovely? It's cold, it's freezing. And she's thinking about the neighbors down the block. She's thinking about people hmm. all the way out in Queens. She's thinking about people all the way out in the Bronx. I'm like, what are you doing in the Bronx? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Are you running? Are you trying to run for office? But you would figure if she was running for office, she would put it in her district. But she's all over thinking about the next person. She's in the middle of grieving, losing her mother. And she's thinking about somebody who's, who lost a loved one while she herself has not healed from losing a loved one. So these things, when I think about them, you know, even when I want to get upset and say, you know what, let me just mind my business and sit in, in a corner. But because of you guys, I just want to continue to do what I do. So thank you for being you. Thank you for what you do. Dr. Phillips, listen, thank we're you. in this together. Like I said, you just have additional family members here in New York. Every time you come to New York, you know, feel free to give them a buzz. Visit the our office. I'll take you to our <laughs> office. Um, you know, we will we'll definitely partner up. Once again, guys, we must say goodbye because um, uh, uh, of the partnerships that we have with Tele Image. Their show has already started. <laughs> we don't want to step over each other's toes. So on that note, Mojo fans, we'll see you next Sunday. Same time, same place, same station. Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye. I never found someone like you.